In this video I'm going to look at the rate determinant step or RDS for short and we're going to link it to reaction mechanisms. So the first thing we'll say is that most chemical reactions don't just occur by one step, they occur in a sequence of steps which we call reaction mechanisms and we've come across those in organic chemistry. So I've just made four steps up here, so just a made up sequence of steps for a reaction and let's just suppose that the first step was very fast, the second step was very very fast, the third step was slow and the fourth step was fast. One of those steps would be classed as the rate determinant step. So effectively it's the step that's going to govern the overall rate of the reaction and I'm sure you can appreciate which one it is. It's the slowest step. So the rate determinant step is the slowest step in a reaction mechanism. So a couple of analogies, um, if you've heard of the phrase a chain is only as strong as its weakest link, so you could have a, a chain made of high tensile steel and then if you made one of the links out of paper then the chain will only be as strong as the paper. If you've got a, a relay team with four runners then the, the sort of overall performance of the team is going to be governed by the speed of the slowest member of the of the team and so so it's kind of a link between um, between those and the chemistry so rate determinant step is the slowest step in a reaction mechanism so if we think about rate equations now so rate equations effectively are giving us uh, an appreciation of the rate of a chemical reaction then if the rate determinant step is the step that governs the rate of the reaction then the rate determinant step and the rate equation have got to be linked together. You can see I've drawn up the beginnings of the rate determinant step in orange here. So if this is the rate equation for a reaction you can see that there's a link between the equation, the rate equation and the, the reactants in the rate determinant step. So any substances that feature in the rate equation they must be involved in the rate determinant step. And another nice sort of connection between the two is the order, so this is order 1, this is order 2, that tells us, it's known as the molecularity of the uh, reaction, so essentially in, in sort of simple language if something is order one that means there's one of them involved in the rate determinant step and you can see B is order two and that means there are two B's in the rate determinant step. It doesn't tell us what the products are all it tells us is the reactants and the number of reactants involved in the rate determinant step. So I think the best thing to do now is to actually apply what we've just said to an actual reaction. So we'll look at this reaction here, the reaction between NO2 and CO to make NO and CO2. And we need to know the rate equation, so it will have been determined experimentally, uh, possibly by in the initial rate method, which we've seen in another video, that the rate equals K multiplied by the concentration of NO2 squared. So remember we can use the rate equation to tell us what's involved and how many are involved in the rate determinant step. So the fact that it's rate equals K concentration of NO2 squared that means that the rate determinant step involves two molecules of NO2 reacting with each other and that's because of this 2, the order 2 here and the only chemical featuring in the rate equation is the NO2. We don't know what the products are but we do know 
that the overall equation is what's written up here or sometimes this is known as the net equation so straight away we should be able to appreciate that there must be another step because we've got carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide featuring in the overall equation but it doesn't feature in the rate determinant step there's no carbon at all in here so we must have another step that's got some carbon in it so let's have a think about well what what could the missing substances be or the other substances be and we'll sort of build up the mechanism as we go now at a level you will only be expected to write two step mechanisms so on the video i'm only going to do two step mechanisms so i would advise that you set it out like this so you've got your rate determinant step obviously we don't know what the products are yet the other step sort of and leave some space underneath and then write the net equation or the overall equation at the bottom there so effectively it's a bit like simultaneous equations the two equations that make up the mechanism need to add up and form the overall equation so we'll start with some of the more obvious things we need there to be one mole of CO as a reactant in the overall equation so we're going to need some CO as a reactant in step 2 or the other step we also need to make some CO2 as a product and so it's going to feature as a product in the other step Okay, the next sort of obvious thing is going to be the fact that, that we've got two NO2s in the rate determinant step, but there are only one in the net equation. And so we're going to need some NO2 coming out as a product so that it will cancel out with one of these orange NO2s in the rate determinant step. Now, the best place to put that is obviously going to be in the green equation because you would end up with NO2 as a product in the orange, it just wouldn't look right, would it? NO2 plus NO2 making NO2, that's, that's not right. So it obviously is going to feature as a product in the green equation. Another thing we need to make is we need some NO, we need to make one mole of NO. So I think the best place to put that is going to be in this step. So, what's going to be left of these? So we've got NO2 plus NO2 making a mole of NO. So what's left? An N and three O's. So let's have NO3 as a product of the rate determinant step. And then it doesn't feature in the overall blue equation, so we need that to cancel out. And so if we put it in as a reactant, oops, in the green step, then we can get it to cancel. And so you can see that's going to cancel with that. One of those is going to cancel with that. And when you add the two steps together, the orange and the green, we make the blue step. NO2 plus CO makes NO and CO2. And so what we would say is this is a valid mechanism for this reaction because it satisfies two conditions the rate determinant step is consistent with the rate equation and the fact that the two steps that make up the mechanism combine to make the net equation I think the reason why students find this topic particularly awkward is the sort of guesswork almost that has to go on um, when you're coming up with possible products for the steps and it's not an exact science there are more than you know there's more than one way of, of doing this and the examiner will credit your credit you with the marks provided that your mechanism satisfies those two conditions so when we do some more on the video I'll give you some alternatives so you can see there's more than you know there's more than just one way of doing the, uh, the mechanism.
So if we have a look at this one now, 2NO plus O2 going to 2NO2. And the rate equation, again, it's been determined experimentally that the rate equals K multiplied by the concentration of NO squared. So it's second order with respect to NO. And so we know that the rate determinant step can only involve two molecules of NO as reactants. So straight away there must be another step because we've got O2 as a reactant and it's not in the rate determinant step as a reactant so it's got to feature in the green equation. So if you want to have a go at this, pause the video and then we'll go through the answers. So I'm going to tackle it this way first of all. I'm going to create something over here by combining these two NO molecules. And I'm going to make this substance N2O2. Now it doesn't feature in the overall equation so I need to get rid of that. So it needs to be a reactant in the green step. So N2O2. So you can see I'm nearly ready to combine the orange and the green to make the blue. I've got two NOs. I don't want any of those to cancel out because I need two in the overall equation. I've, these N2O2 molecules will cancel out, which is good because they don't feature in the overall equation. And I've got my one mole of O2 sitting there. That won't cancel. And I need it there anyway. So let's look at what could form here. Well, you can see we need two NO2s and we don't have any NO2 as a product. So it's got to be in the green equation. Let's see if this works. And that actually does work. We've got two Ns, two Ns. Two plus two is four. Two, two is a four. So we've got our steps. Let's just check it's going to work. N2O2s cancel. And so the overall sum of these two equations is two NOs plus O2 gives two NO2s, which is what we want. Have we satisfied the two conditions? Well, yes, we've just proved that these two add up to give the net equation. So we've satisfied the first condition. Is the rate determining step consistent with the rate equation? Yes, it is, because it's got the two NOs in only and it's second order with respect to NO in the rate equation. And so this would be classed as a valid mechanism. Now, another way to do this, it's a bit, um, it looks a bit weird in places and I'll explain why, or you'll probably get a spot it as soon as I put it on the board. But because it works, you will be credited the marks if you did something like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine an NO and the oxygen of this NO and I'm going to make one of the NO2s that I need. I'm going to need two NO2s. So what's left? Well, it's an individual nitrogen atom. It's very, very unlikely to happen, but just bear with me on this. We're then going to bring this nitrogen over here because we want to get rid of it. And then if you think, well, what would N and O2 make? Obviously it makes NO2. And will that cancel down to give what we want? Well, the N's are cancel. That's everything that cancels. So what are we left with? Two NO's, two NO's, plus O2, plus O2, gives two NO2's, two NO2's. So, believe it or not, this is also an acceptable answer. It's not saying it's the right mechanism, but it works, it satisfies the conditions on both counts. The sum of the steps gives you the net equation and the rate determinant step is consistent with the rate equation. And so you would have to be credited with the marks for that.